Hi, I'm Tommy Master from data36.com and today we will continue learning Python for data science. Our next topic is data structures, which is, you know, really important for data scientists. And in this video, I will show you Python lists. And in the next one, I will show you Python tuples and Python dictionaries. And just a quick comment before we get started. If you want to check out the whole Python for data science series in video or article format, go check out the links below this video. Also, please subscribe and like so the YouTube algorithm can show this video for more people who want to learn data science here on YouTube. Okay, the first question that we have to answer is why do we care about Python data structures? And here's a quick example. And let's imagine that you have a book on your desk. Like, for instance, I have one on mine. It's one of my favorite statistics books, by the way. Peter and Andrew Bruce's Practical Statistics for Data Scientists. And the point is that if you want to store this information in Python, you have to put it into a variable, right? We have learned that in the previous video. So my book will be Practical Statistics for Data Scientists, which is a string. We saved it. I can refer to it anytime in the future. Well, as long as I'm working in this Jupyter Notebook, of course. But what happens if I have two more books on the other side of my desk? Like, for instance, Dan Brown's Digital Fortress. Great book, by the way. And the bestseller Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. Two more variables, right? But what happens if I realize that I have a whole bookshelf behind me? So do you see the problem? Sometimes in Python, we need to store relevant information together in one object instead of several small variables. This is why we have data structures. And there are three major Python data structures, at least that we will use as a data scientist. Python lists, Python tuples, and Python dictionaries. All three are good for different things and you have to use them slightly differently. As I said in this video, I will show you Python lists and in the next video I will show you tuples and dictionaries. But for now let's dig into the practical details of Python lists. Here's a simple example of a Python list. A list of integers. And as you can see, a list is a sequence of values. On the syntax level, it's data put into brackets and separated by commas. But it's important to know that in Python, a list is an object as well. And generally speaking, it's treated like any other data types, integers, strings, booleans, and so on that we have learned in the previous videos. So this means that you can assign your list to a variable so you can store and make it easier to access. Let's do that and call this my first list equals with this. So if I want to query it, I can do that easily. There is my list. And the list, of course, can hold every other type of data, not just integers, strings, booleans, even other lists or the combination of these. So for instance, do you remember Freddy, the dog from the previous video? We stored his attributes in variables, but actually we can store his attributes in one list. Let's just do that. It would look something like this. Dog Freddy, which is his name. It's a string. Nine, which is his age, so it's an integer, is vaccinated. It's true. It's a Boolean. Height is a float, 1.1 and birth year is an integer 2001. Hit shift plus enter. And we got Freddy's attributes in a list. Now let's say that Freddy has two belongings, a bone and a little ball. I will add that to the list as well, which is going to be a list in a list. As you can see, I added an other bracket frame at the end of our list. Actually, we could do this list in a list thingy infinite times. And believe it or not, this simple concept, well, the official name is nested list, by the way, and I will get back to that soon. 
But this simple concept will be essential when it comes to the actual data science part of Python. For instance, when we create multidimensional NumPy arrays to run correlation analysis, but let's not get into it yet. The only thing you should remember is that you can store lists in lists and it's called nested lists. But you can also try this. I will create a sample matrix of three nested lists. Cool. I save this into sample matrix. And if you feel scientific right now, you should, because we have just created a three by three two dimensional matrix. Now, of course, let's focus on the more important things and let's learn how to access a specific element of a Python list. So we have stored these values and it's really essential to know how to access them in the future. As you have already seen, you can get the whole Python list returned if you type the right variable name. Um, it was dog. Oh, and I guess I forgot to run. Yes, I didn't run this cell, so it didn't overwrite my first list. Now I run it. So let's get back to here. Yes, there it is, the belongings in a nested list. So this is how you query the whole list. But it's more exciting. How do you query one particular item from your list? It's highly logical, by the way, because the only thing that comes into play in this case is the position of the value, right? For instance, if you want to call the first element on the dog list, you have to type the name of the list, of course. And the only thing that you have to learn here and remember, but you will use this infinite time in the future, is the syntax itself. So the list name, then bracket frames, and then the number of the element, one. Let's run this cell. What? It returned nine. But nine is actually the second element on the list, not the first. Well, not in Python. Python uses so-called zero-based indexing, which means that the first element's number is zero, the second is one, the third is two, and so on. This is something you have to keep in mind when working with Python data structures or generally with Python. And for practicing, let's just print all the elements from this list one by one. So it's actually dog zero is the name, dog bracket frames one is nine, dog bracket frame two is true, dog bracket frame three is 1.1. I will leave out the fourth and we'll go to the fifth, which is the nested list within the list. I know it's a bit twisted, but you will get used to it. Now let's talk about how to access a specific element of a nested list. So we had Freddy and this list in a list part is a nested list. We have printed it before with this syntax, but can you find out how to get the bone element only, which is located in the nested list? Actually, it's super intuitive, but twist it for first, but it's gonna be the zeroth element of our fifth element. So let's do this in a new cell. With this syntax, I would query the nested list. And then with this, just adding one more bracket frame and then the number of the element, which is zero this time, this queries the zeroth element bone from or nested list. When I hold live workshops, I see people having some problem with this concept at first. So if this is not 100% clear yet for you, I suggest playing around a bit with the other nested list we have created, this sample matrix one, and try to query specific elements of it. Sooner or later, you will learn the trick. And in this video, I want to talk about one last thing how to access multiple elements of a Python list. I don't use this concept too often during my day-to-day -day job, but you know, sometimes it's come up, so it's better to know about it. The syntax is this, using a colon between the two numbers in your brackets. So for instance, one colon four, 
So you will get a sequence of list items and it queries the first element, zero based indexing, remember, the second element, the third element, but not the fourth element. This is another tricky thing in Python next to zero based indexing and I will get back to that because it's going to be really important when we will start to work with for loops. So I will talk more about this, but I think we learned a lot already and this is everything you need to know about Python lists for now. In the next video, we will continue with tuples and dictionaries and then we will go into if statements and for loops and everything else. So stay tuned, the best is yet to come. And in the meantime, I recommend going through this video again and playing around a little bit with Python lists and nested lists. Speaking of which, if you want to test yourself, check out the article version of this video where I added an exercise as well, so you can test yourself. I link that in the description. But with that being said, this is the end of this video. If you liked it, please leave a like or a comment. And if you want to learn more about data science and about how to become a data scientist, take my 50 minute video course, how to become a data scientist. It's free and linked in the description. Also check out my six week online course, the junior data scientist first month video course, which is a super practical, hands-on and fun way to learn data science and more particularly what data science looks like in real life. It's a six week simulation of being a junior data scientist at a true to life startup. So the course is called the junior data scientist first month and I link that in the description as well. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'm Tommy Master from data36.com. Until next time.